Good evening, everybody. This is Commander Alian, host of the number one spiritual UFO talk show on social media. Don D. La Cruz, Red Pill Diva, Boogeyman, Felix, I think it's Orbs, KD, Johnny Peterson, Alicia, Precious, Carol, Starve to Life. Hey, Don De La Cruz, welcome to the show. Hey, Jan, good evening. Good evening to everybody coming in there. M. Jean, one through nine only. DJ, DR, I think it is. Hey, DR. We, Derek, PGRN5. Raiders, Raider895, Kathy, I think it's Basra, John, welcome to the show. LZB, Samut, Sarah, I think it's Katie. My cat is Maui. As soon as I come on live, my cat starts talking. Hammy, welcome to the show, TNDRLN. Look at cats, speaking of cats. David, welcome to the show. Sparky8, James, welcome to Encounters. Russell, welcome to the Encounter Show. Our Dirt Flower, Christopher. Ricky P. Johnny, one of my moderators. Welcome, Johnny. Brian, welcome to the show. Betty Fox 368, good evening. Tracy Faith. Uh, Paul. D. Mayfield. Willa Smith. Queen Sheba, hey, Queen Sheba. Rick Reese, Amanda, Jess, Jessica, Athena Loop. Good to have all these new people, names I haven't seen before. You're tuning in to the number one spiritual UFO talk show on any social media. I don't care if it's YouTube. And also check my YouTube channel out, Astro Command Spaceship News, for all the shows that we record from a live show. This show will be on my YouTube channel by tomorrow morning. And for those just getting, hey, Cosmic One, good to see you. ABC, hey, ABC. Pete Star TV, good evening or good afternoon. User 820. A lot of good people. Hey, Pete Star TV. Sandy Lazar, AJ Jones. And I'm going to give people an idea. I've been looking for you. You found me, Don Jules. Good to see you. Nice to meet you on uh, on the show. I'm glad you found the show and found me. Dana, good to see you. Albert, good to see you. Mike, good to see you. Al Cover, good to see you. All the new people coming in here. It's 20 to 4 in the morning in Ireland. Pretty soon it'll be time for breakfast. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ava. Hey, Ava. Hello, how are you? Welcome to the show. Hey, Stargazer. Utah, welcome. Timothy Drake, welcome to the show. Hey, Chesno, good to see you, brother, Joe Knight. We like to acknowledge people. If we don't if we don't get your name in there, please don't take it personally. We're, you know, there's a lot of people in here coming in. So we, Alpha Wolf, that's a good name. Alicia, good to see you. Thank you for the roses, Dana. So if you give me uh, TikTok gifts, I'll try to remember to acknowledge you. Karen Stevenson, hey, good to see you. Alam Youssef, Swiper Swiper, Naila, thank you for the cheers. You sent the cheers you up. Thank you for that. We appreciate that gift. You know, we appreciate all of you who are gifting, who know our show for so long. Shannon Collins, welcome. Johnny Hill, 531. Crazy Horse, thanks for the likes. So if you're new to this show, let me give you some background about who I am. You probably heard about me on TikTok, on social media. I'm coming to early on. I host a show on WESU for 21 years called The Cosmic Eye, Ash Truckerman Radio. Show dedicated to our space brothers and sisters off planet. And that show I've been doing for 21 years. I've been on Facebook for a lot of years. It's probably 2009. Um, and then I was having friends tell me, get on TikTok. Take your radio show format to TikTok. I said, are you kidding me? There's a bunch of kids on here. But I learned pretty quickly there's a very diverse community here, and I decided to do my professional type of radio thing and bring the first actual talk show on spiritual UFO areas, from visitations, encounters, crop circles, Bigfoot, um, we've light beings. We've talked about all these things, disclosure. So that's what this show's about. Thank you, Don De La Cruz. 
And I'm also very um, outspoken. Hey, D uh, Dawn, thank you for the roses. So I always tell people one thing. I came out of the closet years ago when I was a kid that I come from Mars. I am human like everybody else, but I come from Mars. My consciousness is very awakened. Hendry, uh, thank you for the J gift. Thank you so much. I come from Mars. My consciousness is cosmically Christ consciousness. What does that mean? Because I'm from the stars, I operate in Christ cosmic consciousness. Um, Martian, Ashtar Galactic Command, before there was any internet, I've been working with the command before there was any hoopla and websites all over the place about the Ashtar Command. Ah, Dawn, you're a contactee. We're going to definitely be having you come on here. And everybody follow Dawn. She has 112 people. If we can get Dawn up to 200 tonight, Dawn, you're going to be coming on live, and we're going to hear your contact e story. So that's that's what we do here. We help elevate people. You know, one of the things about being a talk show host, it's not just about me. It's about making sure everybody is uplifted. Everybody follow each other. Everybody follow Dawn right now. She's a contact e. Hendry, thank you for the roses. So I want to get her up there. Hey, Sprites, good to see you. And as soon as we get up to 200 tonight, we're going to bring you on live. Uh, Ava, good to see you, Ava. Don De La Cruz, thank you for the roses. We're just getting warmed up here, folks. As a matter of fact, I got my uh, apple cider here right behind me. JJ, thanks for joining our encounter show. This is the top spiritual UFO talk show. So we actually don't just talk about Nuts and bolts stuff here. That's the typical traditional UFO talk show. We're a non-traditional UFO talk show. We get into, like I say, the spiritual cosmic aspects of the whole subject. We have many people that talk about there being a star seed, visitations with light beings. We get into all that stuff. We hear we even do C five uh, things on here live with people in different parts of the world. So if they're having sightings, they go on live with us. We all focus on what they're showing us on their camera. And we've done C5s here visually right on the show. That's why this show is so different from all those other things you see. Hey, Taz, good to see you. And my cat keeps talking. If you see me step away from the show, it's because my cat is talking. And I have to listen to her. So it's good. Everybody follow. Uh, I want everyone to follow. Uh, let me see who it is. Uh, Dawn Jules. Everybody follow Dawn Jules. She's a contactee, and I want to interview her tonight. So once we get to our, you know, a lot more people coming in here. So we usually get around 150 to 200 people all over the world in the studio. Uh, thank you, Nyla. We appreciate that. Gail Marie, good evening. Gail Marie. And uh, Babs, good evening. Welcome to the Connie Key. Trib Saint, welcome. Natasha Chalice Mom, WJB. Sounds like a radio station. Sadie 1121. Amy, Amy Webb. Ham Solo. Like Han Solo. Ham Solo. 67 Javi. Welcome to the show. Javi Honeybee. Welcome to the show. Shannon Suits. Hey, good to see you. Thanks for the likes, Shannon. Alicia, thanks for the likes. So it's good to have all the people coming in here. Hey, Sun One. Rambo something. Granny Goose 80. Welcome to the show. So I'm a, I am Jocelyn Buddhist. Welcome to the show. I'm Jocelyn Buddhist. John, welcome to the show. Deborah, welcome to the show. Looking at all the people coming in here. Travis, welcome to Encounters. Kimberly Alike, welcome. Alan Cornett. Narnia Business. Hey, Narnia. Dean O, 1975. Thank you for joining us here. Ruddy. Hansen, 19MM76, Bill K199. Good to have you all with us. Good evening, Sassy Little Mama. Good to have you with us. Good evening, Coastal Cosmonaut. Pool player, welcome to the show. Tarot by LA. They must do tarots out in LA. Nat Nelva, I think it is. Joey, hey, welcome to the show, Joey. Eddie Santiago. Good to have all these new names coming in here. User 160. M.B. Blair. M. Blair, I think it is. Danny White. And there's my cat. She's going to be coming on the show here tonight, I think. I have to get her where I can see her. You want to come on the radio? You want to come on the TV show? You want to come on? She's thinking about it. Thank you for the dog. You're talking about, we're talking about things. 
I'm having a conversation with the cat. So that's what happens here. You know, if you have a cat, you'll know that. So welcome. Hey, Alan Cornett. Let's see who else is here. So there's a lot of people coming in here. Our show starts really taking off after 11 o'clock. Hey, Maria, Fabiana, good to see you. Diane, thank you for the likes. Bold move. That's a bold move that you came here. Hey, Travis, welcome to the show. Victor Balbino, yes, the cat. So bold move. Before we bring you on, one of the things, here's, I'm going to just let you, hey, Bobby Rocks, show my brother. Good to have you with her, with us, <laughs> with her, with us, you know, all that stuff. David Thomas. So let me give the perimeters of what the show's about, the rules of the show. And it's uh, been over a year that we've been on here doing the show. So to come on here live, I have to know what you want to talk about. And one thing I'm going to be really key on, no paranormal stuff. I don't want to hear about ghosts or uh, evil entities coming in your house. This is not the show for it. So I'm putting a clamp down on that. Okay. Uh, also, no smoking, no vaping, no drugs, no drunk people. Nada on the show. No. Nobody under 18. No kids on the camera. And uh, no foul language on the show. You know, if you're going to come on the show, this we want we have a high quality program here, and I try to remind people when you want to come on, leave all that stuff out. <laughs> bold moves twenty seven. So bold moves. Um, what do you want to talk about related to our show here? So I know, and I'll bring you on once I know what that is. So we're going to find out. So we're going to do this with everybody from now on to find out what they want to talk about before I bring you on live. Just to keep everything at a very high vibrational frequency here. The Brit Chad official account. Thank you for joining us, Brit Chad. Dana 51. We know that's good. A sighting I saw when I was a teen. Okay, so we're going to bring on Bold Move. And let me see here. And he's got over 200 followers. So uh, again, no vaping, no smoking. Uh, you, you know, he's 27. Uh, the 27, uh, no cursing. And uh, we're just going to keep it at the highest possible levels here. So we're going to bring Bold Move on as our first guest on Encounter the Show. Hey, Bold Move, uh, welcome to Encounters. What's going on, man? Should bring the volume a little bit. And what's your, uh, you want to go by Bold Move or do you have a first name? Uh, either or. You can call me like Joshua or Bold Moves. I'm not bothered. Okay. Uh, so let's, uh, what part of the world are you in and uh, tell us what happened and when it happened. I live in Northern California um like the capital of california and uh pretty much i was like i want to say 15 16 when i saw like at first i didn't even think it was a ufo you know and um i used to skate a lot as a kid i don't really do that now i'm more into snowboarding because like i just don't have the time you know yeah but, um pretty much me and my friends there was like me like Johnny, Justin, Brian, Max, and uh, I forgot the last dude's name. We're all skating at um, a skate park. I don't want to give my position away too much here, you know? Okay, you don't have to. But um, we're skating at a skate park, and, like, pretty much my buddy Johnny points to the – or, yeah, he points to the sky, and he's like, what the Frank is that, you know? And, like, we look in the sky, and it's the middle of the day, you know? It's, like, just a star, you know, in the middle of the daytime. And we're, like, what, what, like, what is that? And it wasn't moving for, like, hella long. So we're just, like, oh, it's just some weird phenomenon. There's a star in the middle of the day, you know? It's just some random off chance, right. you know? You would think, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then we started skating some more, and um, pretty much, like, I look up at it again and it starts to move and I'm like, yo guys, it's moving. And it's like not going down or up, but it's like going left and right. But it's like slowly like descending, you know? And if it was nighttime, I, I put it on everything I love. It would look like any other star in the night, but it's right. like it's enough. zigzagging left, right, left, like at a, like, I don't know how far away it was, but no airplane could go that quick. Because if airplanes are super high in the sky, like 
and they look like dots kind of or whatever uh yeah you know like even though they're moving slow like that they're probably moving really fast and the g-forces to move like that would be insane you know but it keeps going left mm -hmm. and right like slowly descending um and then it goes like either behind or in some clouds and we're like whoa whoa where did it go like i can't see it and then like another five ten minutes pass because it's like going downwards that slowly that it finally pops out of under the clouds and like mm. i swear we're like cavemen that just seen fire we're like what is that thing and um like after like a damn near hits the horizon um it stops mm. again just like instantly stops sits there for like another five or ten minutes and like it was like a star like a, a white dot in the sky you know and um after it sat there it started to like stretch like um from a dot to like a super thin like glowing white line i don't know if it was like bending space time or what but like it starts to stretch into this like glowing line and it gets to this point hmm. and then like it like way faster than it was stretching it like went back and um, once it became a star again, instantly disappeared. And when it disappeared, we're screaming like, whoa, what the hell was that? And like, I was, I'm like, I'm 27 now, bro. And I still remember, I'll tell my grandkids that story because it was just so like crazy to see. But um, what I wanted to say is when my buddy, um, when it was staying still before it started stretching and stuff like that, my buddy took a picture on his phone of it, zoomed in all the way. And like, we couldn't really do nothing with like the color contrast on our phone. So I took a picture of his phone and then zoomed in all the way. And like, we went through all the different filters like of the time on our phones, like black and white was the one that actually showed yeah. us the shape. But, um, and I swear it was literally like, uh, based on the phone picture it was like a gray disc, like, like literally like your typical UFO would look like. Typical, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was wild. Like uh, when we saw that, we all went to sleep the next day because we were kids. We were skating, doing things we probably shouldn't. But like, we all woke up the next day, like because we all slept in my buddy's garage, and we're like, "Y'all, yo, like, did y'all what y'all remember that?" And like, yeah, yeah. we all seen that shit. Or sorry, my bad. What we all seen that, yep. and um, it was hella funny because like while it was all going down, like one dude sitting there like, "Oh, that's." Flight patrol it's flight patrol it's nothing and then my mm -hmm. other buddies like oh the gods are here like i swear bro. yeah they're, they're all kind of coming up with their own theories had mixed reactions to it you know um but yeah i just wanted to share my story i thought it was like like i'm a christian now but like at the time i was super lost and like or whatever i just didn't know what the hell to think about nothing you know well, you know what? You know, you can be Christian, you can be non-religious, and you have an experience with an extraterrestrial spaceship. Matter, it doesn't matter what your religion is. That's an experience that anybody can have because you're a human being. Beyond your religion, you're still human, and you had a, an experience that you'll never forget, right? Yeah, since I've seen that, I've done so much research on UFOs. Like, um, like the first ever claim he abducted was like the black dude and the white girl. Um, I forgot the actual name of them, like Betty or, or something else. And then like Ronald Reagan claims to see a UFO like um, on an airplane, you know. Um, I just had to do so much research because that like, it was like, yo, like just an, a crazy thing to see. And one in three million people, I don't know if it's the same today, but yeah, one in three million people claim to see a UFO. And there's even a lot more than that. Probably, Probably today, 30 more. years later in 2024, there's more people looking for UFOs or non-terrestrial spaceships now because of what happened in the last few years with the Pentagon yeah. coming public with their own UFO group within the Pentagon with their own wanting to get the internal people in all the branches of our military government, Air Force Naval, to come forward with information internally that one could see on their website. So we've come a long way. We still have a long way to go in terms of disclosure. But I think there's a lot more people interested in the subject of not only uh, what UFOs are, but people beyond the UFOs, the intelligences that are uh, coming here from other planets in spaceships. I call them spaceships. But there's also 
uh, we have reverse engineered technologies that are taken from crashed UFOs or retrieval by some of these extraterrestrial crafts that have crashed since the 1940s. I like listening so to we, um, Bob Lazar. Like, yeah, Bob Lazar, I believe, is legit. I've studied I studied him quietly for years. Yeah, I think he's legit. Like how, I think uh, the fact that... The way we reverse engineered the ships was like you were in a group of two and then like every mechanic of the ship, you guys not allowed to talk to each other, but one dude comes in like every week or month or so. And he's like, hey, what did you guys figure out? Then the big man takes it to like the people above him, you know, like, but the scientist beyond just the main functions that you're learning about these UFOs aren't allowed to talk right. to each other will not meet. Yeah, you know? Bob Lazar is an interesting cool. person, I think. If you study all his interviews, you can read a person pretty good. I do, anyway. And I think he's always been legit. I think they were trying to uh, make it look like he knew nothing and he wasn't ever there. But, uh, no, he, he's definitely a legit person. Uh, yeah, I think opinion. he's legit as well. Yeah, definitely. I just wanted to come up and say my thing, you know, because, like, I love talking about aliens ever since that encounter. And I wouldn't necessarily yeah. say it was, like, an encounter or more along the lines of, like, seeing it, you know, like, not... I'm not touching the UFO or nothing, you know, but right. uh, yeah, like I just, uh, it changed my, it flipped my life upside down. Cause I always thought there was like, um, like my, like there was life on other planets, but it was like microbial, you know, yeah, now you microbial know it's not, life, not actual. You know that there are people or beings from other worlds that can come here from other planets, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. See, that's what happened to me when I had my first sighting. But mine was more intense, uh, and I've talked about it on the show for people. When I was a kid, I went upstairs to my kitchen. My brother was older, eight years older than me. My parents were downstairs, and I, for no reason, went upstairs and went past my smaller room to my brother's room. I lived in, and there was a cul-de-sac in a suburban neighborhood. It was night nighttime, and I look open to the wooden shades, and there's a spaceship, a saucer-shaped craft with men, women, and children, and a powerful old blinking light in the center. And it was hovering almost to ground level, and they were telepathically communicating with me. This is before I was a teenager. That was my first sighting, and that was my first contact experience. So for me, it wasn't a little dot in the sky. They just came right there and told me, here we are. You're connected with us. And from there, I had many sightings throughout the years. Uh, it just never stopped. And uh, as I got older, um, I kind of looked at things more differently and my consciousness shifted. So that was my time when I was a kid, you know? See what I think too, like people back in the times, like a thousand years ago, you show them your telephone or your iPhone, they're gonna be, oh, he's a witch, put him on the stake type stuff, you know? But, um, like, so I see it as like, okay, like we used to think the earth was flat, you go to the edge and you fall off. And then it's like, oh, now it's like, Oh, there's space and like um but we can't travel to it yet and we haven't even discovered all of our oceans but like another civilization that's like okay we've already discovered like all of our oceans we're already exploring space then like one above that's like right. okay we pretty much mapped out most of space and our medical technology is so advanced what if i unalive you and then bring you back and just to see if there's something on the other side, you know, and then right. what if there was? If you know, the, the, first the, civilization thing, the thing is very really interesting about this is that all the things we've been taught on Earth in school, breaking cosmic news. And some of you already know this. You got for the roses and everybody for the gifts. Um, the breaking news is all the textbooks, all the teaching we went through throughout our, our decades, whatever decade you were born. For the most part, it's all based on lies. It's all based on, it's all based on controlling people and controlling well, that's people. That's why schools from look like standards. prisons, though. You know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, basically, when you saw that UFO, that was an eye opener because what, they're, what you're seeing is something that they never taught in school. They never teach people in school. Maybe now there's some innovative teachers talking about people from other planets, but they might be out there in universities or high schools somewhere here and there, but not many, I doubt. Bro. Uh, um when i seen that like one of the dudes at the skate park he was always there right every day he was there we called him crazy k but like he that's why he was 
the gods are here or whatever like because he's a crazy dude and he doesn't think like he's just a crazy guy like not like he's gonna do nothing to people but he's just they're thinking he's that crazy like, literally thinking a year later thinking. i saw him in college and i was like whoa and he's like yeah. talking normal i was like what the hell dude like yeah. you're in college now like yeah i thought you're gonna be a you know, bum at the skate park like, your whole life right you know and i'm sure internally he still believes in what he believes in about outer space you know yeah he's just in a different environment if you were to sit down and talk to him about it i'm sure he would spill what he feels and and talk about that, which would be kind of beautiful, you know. Yeah, but that's what but I'm I glad think, you came up here. Um, to, uh... Is like, I don't think space is the final frontier. I think like right now it is. Just like ancient humans used to think that the final frontier was the ocean, you know. Um, I personally think that the final frontier is like um, the D word. I, I'm not sure if I can even say it on this platform. I'll put it this way. Let me let me explain something. So. On Earth, people are taught that there's a specific ending and a beginning and an ending. There's no ending and there's no beginning. So the 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 galactic understanding of what I'm saying for people is that when you go to you know if you want to leave Earth, you can leave Earth. These people that say there's a glass bubble protect you know keeping us from going anywhere. The only reason we we can't go anywhere is because we don't have the spiritual or technological advancements. Yeah. Although we do have my contact in the DOD last year told us from the Midwest they sent an Air Force pilot on a ship, you know, similar to the ships we usually have for NASA, and they retrofitted the ship with the technology that went all the way from here to Jupiter in 25 minutes, came back, all around 25 minutes. Most people don't know this, but I got a really good memory from my show from last year and my DOD contact, and we do have a contact within the DOD, said, oh, yeah, we've gone over – probably 20 plus times testing with an Air Force pilot, maybe different pilots trained. They have used technology to get to Jupiter and come back in 25 minutes. So some of you probably never even heard of this, but well, this is a true story I mean, and what, we're able wait, to travel. When the SR-71 Blackbird was released, people were like, oh, we created this, man made this. And that's when it was released to the public from the government, you know? Like, we gotta think like what's unreleased from the government. like if World War yeah, Three ever happens, right. like yeah. that's when the things are going to be released that we would have been like, holy hell! I thought like everything was too. way less high tech, like, and that's literally yeah. what it is. Like SEAL Team Six, those dudes, they got it like that. They already they don't know everything, but they're using things that we don't know about, and it's like, uh, oh, yeah, we've got reverse technology. We have reverse technology from extraterrestrial craft that's, that we actually shot down with scalar technology to, to get the uh, technology. So that exists. And the other thing is when people do have sightings, they have to be really keen on, on what they feel. If you don't feel any energy coming from that specific UFO, it's one of ours. It's something we've reversed engineered. If you feel a certain energy coming from it, it's definitely non-terrestrial. But there's no energy it's definitely one of ours. Yeah, I didn't feel it's any energy, been... but I don't know if it depends on how far it was or what. But yeah. I mean, I felt energy as excitement. Like I was like, holy hell, what the hell is that thing? And like when it stretched, like it was like Albert Einstein's thing, like to um, travel through space is like a slingshot, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what I try to compare it to. Like it literally stretched super slowly. And then when, uh, when you let go of the slingshot, it's way faster than you pulling it back, you know? So right. like, that's what I was trying to compare that to my, my whole life. I still yeah. do, cause it's like, it was just, yeah, it was just insane, bro. Like legit. See, and it's a good story. And I bet you, you'll have many more sightings this year. If you focus on med. I don't know if you meditate at all, but if you focus, if you download the C5 app, uh, Bold, I'm going to recommend an app. It's like 999. I don't know if you have an iPhone or if you have a Android phone. Either way, download the app. It has the protocol. Dr. Stephen Greer tells you how to use the protocol. There are certain uh, sound tones that are used for contact. And if you do those things, I guantee you with a group of people that you feel are not going to be afraid to do it, it's a very positive wait, wait, experience. Though, I think it's you? scary, though. You know, like, I don't be scared. Don't be in scared. my opinion, be scared like, about. it's cool to see it from a distance. But like to actually be close or whatever, 
that scares the hell out of me, you know, just because like uh, don't they can scary. read my mind get rid of the scary. or anything. Like what if yeah, I get think rid like, of the scary. like what if yeah, the get, intrusive get rid of that point? scary thinking. Get rid of the scary thinking is what my I've been to, I've taught people workshops. Yeah, I'm a coordinator for C5 in New England here. I we train people how to do it. And it's not scary. It's a beautiful experience. So get rid of the word scary. Download the app, study it for a while, you know, listen to the tones, read the protocol. I would uh, say people are it. scared of the unknown though, you know? Or like uh, nothing to be scared out. The unknown is our space. We have Space Brothers and Space Star family that are connected with us from all over the multiverse. Also, once you get over the scary stuff, you'll be fine. Another thing I think why the government doesn't like talk about UFOs or like now they're calling them UAPs and they're like not even from our dimension or whatever. Like mm -hmm. I think it's because like for in America, like if there's something bigger and badder than us, like that's mm -hmm. going to not only scare Americans, but the world at the fact that like, you know, they just obliterate us at any moment in time. Yeah, but that's that. Let me, let me give you, let me give you some information here. Cause all the stuff you're prevent, uh, saying that's scared is based on what you've heard and seen throughout your current history. There's nothing to be scared at. First of all, if, the extraterrestrial intelligences wanted to obliterate and blow up planet earth they would have done it billions of years ago our planet is a result so don't believe on that stuff well throw that throw that stuff out of your consciousness no one's going to obliterate our world no extraterrestrials coming here to blow it up you should be more concerned with all the nuclear silos we have around the planet that have been built by man and the nuclear bombs that were blown up before your time in nagasaki and Hiroshima by scientists who developed a hydrogen bomb, you should be more, not even scared, you should be more concerned about what the so-called scientists over the last 70 years have done to our own planet, which has not been good. I would not worry about us being obliterated by non-terrestrial beings from another planet, because it's not gonna happen. If anything, the space people are more concerned with us blowing our planet up and the way we're treating our planet than with blowing it up. They're not there to blow it up. These are you know, space people from uh, other planetary systems that are way more spiritual than we are. I have another question. So be afraid, have another question. I'd be more concerned with the things on Earth that are going on with the people that are controlling different countries that are pretty much insane. I have another question. So, like, do you think, like, because if they're way older than us, I don't know how fast they reproduce or whatever or how much smarter nature made them, you know, if they already evolved past our point. But, like, do you think the UFOs coming to Earth are like, because the way, I, like, let me say it like this, like, if they have been around millions of more years than us, then... Actually billions. Yes, and their military would be so, like, would literally be like... But they don't population. have a military, this is the thing. So do you think it's like they the don't military, have military coming here, or like they're actual people? No, they don't have that. They don't have a military. You're thinking in Earth-based thinking, military, because we have that on Earth. There's no militaries in space. The star people don't have militaries. They come in galactic understanding of love and understanding of consciousness. They work in a, a Christed consciousness. They have, they're not here to come with militaries. They don't have militaries. What they do have is billions of years of advanced knowledge and also spiritual understanding and the connection with oneness, the creator, God, source. It's all the same thing. On Earth, we've been so distorted by the truth that by everything from Hollywood to what we see on the news, what we see on YouTube, whatever, that we don't know what that is, what that what that reality is. So I'm actually because I came from Mars, uh, and because I work in Christ consciousness, and I've been involved in this for all my adult life. Uh, a teachable thing for you is throw all that stuff out the window that you've heard over the, your adult life. Just throw it out and start afresh. You'll be empty in your stomach for maybe a week, but I guarantee you'll be better off if you don't believe any of that stuff that you've heard about there's no military space people coming here like star wars or uh you know green no, men I'm not coming here to star wars beyond that you know, whatever it is it's, it just look at this from a bigger perspective i'm, I'm actually giving a teachable moment um to just forget all that stuff if you want to know something there are star people men and women from other planets they're here to help us they're not here to blow up our world there's no military we have militaries all over our planet earth we have the nuclear weapons on planet earth we have the scientists that developed all these things, but now things are going to switch. If you get into this more and more, we're going into another frequency, another vibrational pattern, which is going to be 
that our earth is going to be going into an ascending state with us living on this planet we are every day going to uplift into a much greater consciousness than we are now. So, you will too. Do you think you will like, too? You'll go into that greater consciousness. Do you think like um like when they come, like they already see planets with life, and they're like, oh, they're gonna evolve intelligent life because they're just that smart, or this planet's probably not gonna evolve evolve into intelligent life, you know, after studying it. Like, do you think that they ever go to planets and then they're just like, okay, like if they blow themselves up, that's okay because that's just called. Let me like, let me let me let me ask you a question. And they just couldn't. They, they, let me ask you a question. So, put that. It's a great question. No, they don't look at look at us as less because we actually don't remember that we come from where they are. We came from the stars. We are basically humanly born here, but once you go into the memory banks and uplift your frequency and meditate and learn how to connect with your true self. You're not just a human being called Bold Moves, so I'll just use that as your name, but you are actually more than what you think you are, see. Once you are activated, I guarantee you, uh, you'll see that they're not, we're not like little peas in a pod. We're not like a little uh, camp for a bunch of ant humans that are running around here, billions and billions of us doing everything on Earth that we're no, uh, no greater than we seem to be. We are actually really uh galactically human meaning that we're not from this nobody is but we're born here but we just don't remember that we're not from here when you remember if you are willing to do this and you do the meditations and you're willing to learn how to get into cosmic consciousness within your own being you're going to learn many more things than you'll see that you've seen on tv or documentaries or anywhere you're going to find out who you really are you're not just this person that is now you know in the 20s late 20s and used to do skateboarding or whatever you used to do you're way more than just a human being but you don't realize that yet but you will you so know, do you be like, like a heaven or a hell or no no there's no heaven there's no heaven hell there that's earth based like reincarnation teaching. no there's no heaven or hell what there is is a a place where we become elevated and actually become cosmically priced beings of light that's what it truly is <laughs> When we as humans elevate into cosmic Christ consciousness, then we are elevated into that frequency. The heaven that we talk about is the heaven of the vibrational patterns in Christ consciousness. So if you want to translate the word heaven, heaven is really looking at space, the stars, the universe. That is your heaven. Your ability to, and your other heaven is that when you become elevated into a galactic Christ conscious human being or being, you are a heavenly being. Heavenly being is one that is not limited by third dimensional thinking, you know, so I've decoded all these things. So, you know, in religions, they talk about heaven and hell and all this stuff. Throw those books out the window. Throw all that stuff in the matrix out the window. You know, well, learn I mean, like, to look at things from a different point Lightweight, of view. though, if you think, like, what Jesus was saying was correct, though, when he was alive, you know. Jesus is still alive. Let me talk about Jesus for a minute. So, gee, I'm going to blow your mind. Jesus came from the stars. Jesus was a galactic being of light that came here, decided to be a star seed, I'm became a baby in a, a family of carpenters, and he really was on the cover. He came here, he went to the lost teachings of India, he went to North America, what we call North America, he met with indigenous tribes. You don't hear that about yeah, Jesus. Yeah, you don't, but I did know that. I did know that 100%. So Jesus is a light worker. Jesus never died. As a matter of fact, when he went into the clouds, he was taken on a big spaceship. That's what that cloud formation was, was an electromagnetic field distortion. And he got lifted into a big spaceship and left the planet. That's what happened. So do you not and think that, there's that, bad They don't teach you that in like, religion. They won't ever teach you that in Earth-based religion. Do you not think that there's like bad people all this like, that are just higher than us? Like, you know, like you just like all your morals are lost and now you're just instantly like better or like do you think like okay like he went up into the next level of mind he was already there he came here he came here undercover he was already at a level well, what he came here to teach us to be like him but people some people didn't like what he was teaching because he didn't come from earth so therefore they went after him but the truth is he left the planet on a big spaceship but what about like, Lucifer? Like, um, do you think he's like 
above us in the understanding section of it, but like he just is an evil person and like he just doesn't want to see us thrive or like understand ourselves. No, that's all. Wherever you're getting those slush, them throw that out the window too. Jesus is here. He loved every. He loves everybody. He's teaching us that we need to live in Christ consciousness. Human beings do not live in Christ consciousness. Christ consciousness is not a religious thing. It's a cosmic thing. It's a galactic thing. When uh, one lives in Christ consciousness, it breaks the whole matrix. If everybody left lived on this planet in Christ consciousness, we wouldn't have war. We wouldn't have pollution. We wouldn't have anything like that. We'd have an earth that is renewed in a very different way. He came here to teach the world when he came to earth that you can live and be as I am. He was trying to teach people, breathe, act, breathe, and act in Christ consciousness. But a lot of humans didn't do that. They were jealous of him. And he was just a very strong light worker who came here from the stars to help people. But in religion, it, it messes people's minds up. And I can tell any religion, any Bible you read, any religious minister you talk to, um, they have a prescribed belief system that has nothing to do with the true teachings of Jesus, who was a Christ of being of life. Well, I mean, everything that is in the Bible I read, it like Jesus genuinely, every single word that he said was genuine, you know. Now, I'm, I'm not Jesus, here to talk about like, Jesus, Jesus himself, but there's a lot of things in the Bible, and even in the Hebrew text, a lot of things were taken out that deal with, uh, with his cosmic reality. They were taken out a long time ago. A lot of things yeah, are taken out of the Bible. I agree that with related that. To I think the connection. gospel, though, is valid. The gospel's valid for sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't read into any of that stuff. I just throw it out because I'm way beyond the gospel, this book, that book. I just live in Christ consciousness. I just live in cosmic consciousness. Coming from Mars uh, and waking up to the fact that I wasn't from here, you know, uh, I don't even care about the Hebrew uh, scriptures. I just understand if people just go to the source, you don't need all these things to clog your mind up because they so will. So what's on Mars? Out of Say again? What's on Mars? Just out of curiosity. I can tell you about Mars because that's where I come from. There's 10 to 15 million people living on Mars. It's a very spiritual world. Unlike on Earth, the Martian population lives in a very harmonious way with the Creator. And uh, for things like NASA and all these people saying we want to find life on Mars, a Land Rover, there is life on Mars. There's vegetation on Mars. There's waterways on Mars. Most of the waterways are reversal inside the planet, under the ground of the planet. There are all kinds of things on Mars, transportation systems, uh, advanced mechanisms to travel into space. The NASA is never going to tell you that. You're not going to hear that from Earth-based media or NASA or space science. They know it's there. They so you know. do you think, like, what would be the point of – leaving in a spaceship wouldn't it be much more efficient just to walk through like a portal to instantly be there there are ways that advanced beings go through stargates they go through wormholes but a lot of the like, without spaceships, a spaceship just you as your person walking through a portal uh, not everyone's going to do that to get a lot there. of the space beings a lot of people from off planet operate through advanced spacecraft technology that's not earth-based it's crystallized technology they use the sun's energy they use frequencies in space to travel way beyond our understanding on earth where we use pretty much primitive technology uh with the technology nasa has and some other people are using space people can come through stargates and they do but they also use spaceships that's the also the thing i wanted to say um is, what do you think about CERN? I think that was a mistake. I think that they're playing a little bit with things they shouldn't be playing with. Uh, I think that uh, there, the ancient Stargates still exist on our planet for a long, long time. It's just a part I don't of the planet, right? Stargate. Yeah, I don't believe in any of that stuff should have been used. I think the, they don't understand what they're doing. I pretty much stay away from that, but um, I think people need to just elevate their frequency in their consciousness to get to a cosmic state and that is where you'll be able to communicate with your space brothers and sisters so as you get to watch the show more you're going to learn a lot on encounters i'm glad you came on here and asked all these questions so you have a lot to ponder a lot to yeah, think about I, like i'm pretty educated on it you know i've done my fair share of research you know uh so i just wanted to see your opinions and stuff yeah no i'm glad you came on this is great 
Hell yeah. I'm gonna All drop right. though, brother. Uh I don't know if anyone's requesting or not, but good talks, man. You're cool as hell, bro. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that so much, man. You're a blessing. Get to see five app, download it, and uh you know, get to know it a little bit and get some people together. Uh don't be afraid to use it. There's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, but just as use the protocol. And again, Marie, thank you for the roses. And you'll be doing good, man. Hell yeah. I'm okay? gonna I'm gonna get the app. You said C like the letter C and five. No, CE five. like an Echo 5. It's Dr. Stephen Greer's app, and it's great. And uh, you'll learn quite a bit. Okay, CE5. I got you. You got it, man. You got Hi, it. Hi, brother. All right. Hey, thanks for coming on here, man. We appreciate it. So that was great. We enjoyed that conversation, you know. Great interview. Great interview. And, uh, you know, we appreciate everybody, all the gifts. Uh, Gail, thank you so much. And uh, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, I just posted um, I just posted a video earlier tonight that is from uh, Key West, Florida. It was actually recorded, I think, yesterday. And if you get to see it after the show, I was looking at the video, and my conclusion is that a bunch of spaceships created this circular thing on these clouds over the uh, water. Uh, off the coast of the Key West, and I'm pretty sure it, it looked like they were like kind of going inward, and I think they actually went into the ocean there. And yeah, the crop circle thing from in uh, from uh, Kansas City, uh, outside of Kansas City, uh, I have some people, friends of mine who are living in that region. They're going to check it out. Uh, so yeah, it's a really interesting thing. The circles and the clouds. I've seen circles and clouds before like that. Normally, it's either a spaceship that is cloaked or that has come through the clouds and created that circular structure. Um, toy Stop. They're going to bring fleet soon to get the Antarctica UFO. So Toy Stop, let me uh, see if you'd like to come on. I'm kind of interested in your opinion. Toy Stop, let's see. Again, let me just mention the people. The basis of what we do here on Encounters uh, is no foul language. You have to be over 18. No kids on the camera, no vaping, no smoking, no drinking, no drugs. That covers the whole area right there. Uh, we keep it focused on paranormal stories, no paranormal. That can be on any other TikTok right here. We don't talk paranormal. We don't get into ghosts. We don't get into any of that stuff. We keep it all out, okay? Uh, and what else is there? I think that's most of it. And just stay focused on the conversations. Disclosure, uh, UFO sightings you've had, uh, visitations by space people, yes. Paranormal, no. No paranormal. I finally had to put a kibosh on that because that started coming into the program here. All right? Uh, so uh, definitely uh, we are always glad to hear your stories. But there is a, a lot of stuff going on. I was looking at some more videos. I haven't posted them yet. And this one video I might post, and it's pretty amazing. Uh, and it's like, I think it's from last year, four months ago. But it's worth posting. I think I'll post it tomorrow morning. When you see that video, it's going to blow your mind. It looks like it's a multidimensional ship with all these lights blinking. Not just like separate lights. It's just like a... It's like this flash of these different multicolored lights. Hey, Noel, good to see you. Uh, good to have you with us, Noel. And everybody coming in here. Holy Eagle, thank you, Holy Eagle, for the heart. We appreciate it, Holy Eagle. Thank you. Um, so there's so much going on now, and we're getting close to that time. We're going to be doing two C5 events here in New England, an Ashtar Command C5 in April uh, that'll be on uh, the 13th uh, at 8 o'clock at an apple orchard, uh, which we've been using for over 11 years. Uh, Gail, thank you again for the roses. And uh, we're going to have a really great get-together of people. Chesno's in our group. He's on here. Um, so we're going to have a lot of things. Hey, uh, Clifford, good to see you. Thank you, Gail and Marie, for that as well. And it's just going to be phenomenal. Then the big event will be happening on the 20th in Ledger. Uh, Grace is putting that together with the uh, South Asian uh, C5 group at that part of the state. Uh, I've had many encounters started in 1978, Gramps. 
uh, we're going to, Gramps has 106 followers, so if we can get Gramps another 100 followers, every you follow Gramps, and also, what's the other person? I think there's one other person here that I wanted to get up to over 100 more. And so we just want to make sure we encourage that with everybody. Uh, good to see you. Holy Eagle, thank you. Everyone coming in here. If you have a story to tell, uh, you must be Schizo. Thanks for joining us. Laura, thank you for joining us. Everybody follow Gramps. I like that name. Let's see if we get Gramps on here. Hey, Frederica. I'm looking at all watching encounters, the late night UFO spiritual talk show. I have videos of the past four on. Interesting. We got to get Gramps on here, man. Uh, let's see. Gramps is, uh, he's got 106. We need to get him another 100 people to follow him. We have 156 people here. Let's get another 100 to follow him. If you're not following Gramps, follow Gramps. So we can bring him on here. Oh, Gramps is private. Hey, Gramps, you need to change your setting. Change your setting, Gramps. Go into your settings on your TikTok. Set it to public. And then everybody can follow you because you're set to private. Set your account from private to public, Gramps. Switch it. Hey, Adam, welcome to the show. Yeah, send it. Uh, switch it to public, Gramps. You got it set to private. L1NZ1, welcome. Okay, can I see? Can I follow him now? Yeah, Gramps, you're still, I can't even follow you yet. You got to go in your settings and switch it. Greg, you got to switch it to uh, public. Switch it over to public. That's the only way we can all follow you and get you on here. So we do that for people on Encounters. We want to, you know, get people on here to tell their story. Uh, I tried to follow him. Yeah, he had his thing set on. When, he, when you have it set on public, let everybody know, Gramps. Once you have it switched over, let everybody Hey, John, welcome to the show. You're watching Encounters. Uh, Bart Hughes, welcome. Oscilloscope, welcome to the show. Good to have you on Encounters here late night. Laura, welcome to our show. Good to have you with us, Laura. And uh, everyone, hey, hi again, Tiffany. So we're going to see if we can get Gramps on here because he's got a story to tell. Here by Kristen. Hey, here by Kristen. So we're going to see where Gramps is right now. Gramps is here somewhere in space. We'll take a little gander here. Derek Simpson, welcome, Derek. Etheric, welcome. I wonder if soul lips are coming. Hi, Bird Jen. Hey, hi. I have a lot of stories, too, if you want to call me up. Hi, Bird Jen. We do. We're going to bring you up. Hi, Bird Jen is going to be a guest on the show. Our second guest for the night, Hi, Bird Jen. On Encounters. And let me see here. Once TikTok gets, there we go. We got Hi, Bird Jen there. Hi, Bird Jen. Uh, can Hi. you turn your camera on? Hey, good evening. What did you ask thank me you if I could do this. what? Your ca you have a camera. You see what the little camera icon is? Uh, You'll see the microphone and the camera. Okay. <laughs> you can turn it on. You're close to 1,000. I think you can use it. Okay. Is that good? Uh, it's not on yet. Press the camera and then save. Oh. There you go. Now you're right. on hybrid gen. Where, where, in the, where, where on the planet are you located? <laughs> I'm in California, Central Valley. Oh, welcome to the show. Uh, glad to have you with us. So tell us about yourself. Tell us uh, some of your stories and when did it start for you? Okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with saying that my dad actually had the first encounter which is rippling into my life um when he was a foster kid he was with this foster mother they lived in the country in Perry. this is back in like um i don't know maybe the 50s so he said it was in the he said it was in the newspaper what happened well anyways him and his foster mother were in their house and um they heard like they started feeling like a vibration and stuff and there was a bright light outside in the window and he said that it was like coming to the ground and that she went, had him get behind the couch and she started praying and stuff because she was really christian and really strict 
Christian woman. She made him go to church mm-hmm. like every day. And he, he, wow. he raised me up. He raised me up not to know anything about religion because of his experience as a kid. So wow. um, I never was brought up in that kind of uh, religion. So mm-hmm. anyways, he said he was with her and that he fell asleep. But he said before he fell asleep that he, um, he the doorknob was like shaken and um, he could see like a silhouette when he tried to look out the window of like t- mm-hmm. a tall slender bean and a mm-hmm. smaller couple of smaller ones. So when I think about that, I think about like a parent with like kids or something because one's bigger and one's smaller. Right. But he right. said he got really sleepy. He got really sleepy and you know she pulled him and tugged him to come back behind the couch with her. But he really wanted to see what was going on outside, but she didn't let him and he fell asleep. And when he woke up, they woke up because there was knocking on the door and it was police and it was it was fire departments and it was a news oh station God. with the with the with the van wanting to interview mm-hmm. him. And he said outside of his house, there was a huge burnt mark, like a big um, sink, like a circle, like a circular, you know. So my dad is an engineer for the for the military and he's really smart. And um, I think it all has something to do with like his childhood. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, my mother, she's like Navajo, and um, she had an experience when she was a kid too. With something mm-hmm. blue, like a blue light star, came into her room, and she doesn't remember it much. But, anyways, wow. so as no, I think there. TikTok's glitchy. And I've seen so many UFOs. Yeah. All kinds of different, wow. um, all kinds of different. Uh, I've seen, I've seen uh, UFO that are made out of like lava, that are like melting in the sky, like dripping lava. Really, I've seen uh, a triangular UFO. I actually have a, I have a picture of it, on um, I have it pinned on Twilight Zone Ma, on my um, TikTok and stuff, and okay. um. When I was when I was younger, my my teenage sister she was supposed to babysit me and she wanted to go out to this bonfire, and this is when we were living in Wisconsin, and it was like a bunch of teenagers out there in the middle of the woods, yeah. trying to have like a little party, and I'm like a little kid, and we had just barely showed up to this event that she dragged me along, and um, all of a sudden all these bright lights, like as bright as like deer lights, you know those shiners. Yeah, there's all these bright lights, like different colors, flashing each turn. And then every time they would, every time they would like shoot, you could kind of hear it, and you, and it was just so bright. It's like when someone flashes yeah. you with a camera, and you can't really see afterwards. Yeah. So um, that was happening. There was like forty teenagers out there. I mean, there's a lot of trucks and cars, and it started happening. And my sister's boyfriend like threw me in the back of his truck. And we yeah. drove out there. But that was so many witnesses that 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 they witnessed that. And there's been a lot of activity in Lake Michigan and a lot of activity in Michigan. So I wonder if it's all yeah. connected that area with, with Wisconsin, the lake. Yeah. And it is. Yeah. You're so right about I get that. really nervous talking to people. Oh, don't be nervous. You're, 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 my heart is, is going time. so fast. Is this the first time <laughs> you've seen my show? Have this the first time? <laughs> Yeah, I've seen you a couple of times, but you were busy having conversations with other people. I didn't want to stop, but I have ADD oh, and I get like, I got you on here. really nervous. No, no need to be afraid because we treat everybody with respect here on this show, as you can see. I've never, I'm here to uplift people. Uh, it's time for this to be the way it is. I've been on radio for over, well, since the 70s, but for the subject for 21 years. And I'm here to bust the matrix. And, just realize that you are now the majority of the population, not the minority anymore. 30 years ago, people might laugh and think, ha, 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 but the majority is us. We are all the majority now. Every That's why this show is so big, because I'm actually bringing this show here for, I've been to, uh, on TikTok for over a year, to bust everyone's belief systems, bust the matrix. I don't care who anybody is. I, I'll take the trolls I have here. We'll just kick them out. We have hardly any problems here because we honor every single person that comes on the show. We honor everybody. So just yes. don't be nervous. You're good. I'm trying to calm down. And um, and You'll when I was right. a little kid, like on field day in Wisconsin, I seen like a, a... I guess there's a little glitch on TikTok. And tonight. some other little kids saw that too. 
And if you want to get up in the sky, we're like if you're holding a flashlight and it has like a ray. I've seen mm -hmm. that in Wisconsin too. The, the magma lava UFO that I saw, that I saw that in California. And I've also seen stars move around that are too quick and they maneuver too quick for them to be airplanes. Yeah. These things look like fishes now underwater, us, but they're up there the, uh, like tadpoles. Jen, tell us, tell us about the lava UFO. That's interesting. When you say lava, what did it look like shape? It was like a straight line that looked like a glow stick. Okay. And it was dangling and on the very top it had like a really bright red light. And then wow. at the very tip it looked like lava lava was dripping out like um almost oh, like a portal but a straight portal. You know how portals come in different shapes? Well, yeah, this one do. was like a straight line and and it was like pouring out uh like lava. And I was wow. like a little kid in my my grandparents' backyard, and it really spooked mm -hmm. me and my cousins out because it was getting closer to us. It wasn't like it wasn't going away; it was like coming closer. We were really afraid what oh it was going to do when it reached us. But my grandpa, my grandpa Juan, he was he's like, I think he was kind of tipsy or something. <laughs> but he said he did like a little dance. He said, "I'll keep them away. They're not going to bother." Yeah, we all, we right. were all hoping he was right. Yeah, but it it was like. It, like a lot of my uh, relatives and friends, they've all experienced mm -hmm. like weird stuff being with me in the sky. Yeah. Like, like all my friends, all my family, they all like, they feel like I'm like magical or like supernatural because not only have I seen a lot of UFOs, I've had dreams with aliens. I've seen different types of aliens. Um, I Explain me. When you say different types of aliens, let's stop there because you have so many immense stories here. So let's take the chapter of the ET. What okay. kind of ETs in your dreams have you seen, and has it been positive? Have you any? Have you had visitations? Positive? Can you tell us a little? I have a feeling you've had other things other than just seeing them. Correct. Okay. So one that really sticks out to me, and I had to find out. I wanted to find out what the alien name was. Is it's the closest to an Andromedian? I think that's how you say it. Uh, what I saw was a being that came out of the sun and it had a silhouette of a human form, but it was all, mm -hmm. it was all like lava, like lava. all made, made out of magma, like, like it was glowing. Right. And we were speaking like telepathically and it okay. basically was telling me that the sun is a portal, that our sun, things come in and out of it. Oh yeah. Because if you, if you... I feel like I saw this, this being and it was just like face to face. And then mm -hmm. there was times before where I asked, I could feel something like, cause sometimes I get like these crazy downloads or like uploads of like information. And it's like, yeah. it's really crazy. And one time I was like having like a real, like, like when I was a little kid, I didn't talk. I didn't talk till I was like seven years old. And they diagnosed me with ADD. Oh, wow. But like, so I'm really observant with my other senses. Like I'm, all my senses are really heightened. So I, um, I gotta calm down. It's okay. You're doing but, um, good. Take a deep breath. Relax. You're amongst yeah, good um, people here on the show. I just I want to look good on these videos, but I don't look good. No, you look I fine. wish I was like like Dolly Parton. Or something. She's fine. <laughs> so um um I'm really observative with my senses, and a lot of my dreams we don't even use words. We're we're using mm -hmm. images. And like when I could read somebody, which I could tell, like I could tell about someone's life like very fast. It's very quick. Mm -hmm. I'll get like a very quick flashes of of hardcore memories in the brains that I'll see. And I I discovered I had this ability because I would say things out loud to people, and they would say, "How do you know that? I never told you that." And I, right. I say I say, "Well, I just saw a picture, and it it, it kind of made me believe what I what I saw, and then it just came out." Yeah. And and I see like I mean if I go to stores or go to like fairs or anything, like I'm reading everybody. Like it's it's not it's, it just comes easy. So that's how I know that these extraterrestrials, their their yeah. power is so yeah. incredible. Like have you ever like, gotten uh have you ever gotten, Jen, any information over the years with contact with the space beings of different types like the one that you Oh yeah, about, that's like, what I was gonna say. I saw a praying yeah. mantis, a praying mantis alien being. I've seen like um, I've been on ships before where I'm wearing all white, 
And these ships are incredible. They have like huge libraries, huge aquatic like places where gardens are growing. They have gyms. Wow. Um, it's see through. You can see out of the ship. Like it's mm-hmm. metal, but it's clear. Um, right. I've actually seen a spaceship come down close to me that was transparent. And that mm-hmm. was here in California. So I would um, say it was a transparent or translucent. Basically the same thing, but yeah, yeah. I um I have a hard time speaking, so I could I could I mean like you could see through it. Yeah, I understand that. I think translucent I, I means like glow, well, right? Yeah, so if you are on the ship and you were looking at the person on the ground on earth, like yourself, or you were the one on the ship, you would see the person standing there. And your ship is translucent, but you are you're not just gonna fall through the ship. It's just the way the ship is made. Yeah. It's beyond anything we have. It's just translucent. Yeah, it's like stealth. Yeah. Yeah, it could it could Completely it right. could turn it could turn green or it could turn clear, it could turn yeah. black, it could turn metal, it could turn it could look like wood. It do whatever it wants. <laughs> it's like a chame- yeah. it's like chameleon or something. It'll blend in with whatever <laughs> background. Right. And um I just I've seen a lot of crazy stuff. I've I've had dreams of like I've had dreams of of going on different planets and planting uh like creatures there, like little tiny like squirrel kind of things that get the soil ready. They dig holes okay. and they get the soil ready. Oh interesting. It's it's so crazy. Yeah, and um I just um I I, I have like a s not just a cosmic thing with like space and like UFO and aliens. I also have a lot of intu- intuition with like spirits and like paranormal activity has been going on around yeah, me. Yeah, so we, we stay away from the paranormal. We just, so we, <laughs> we don't, even if you have that, we just want to stay from that. We have had recently people with the paranormal stuff. And we don't dishonor that, but we want to keep that focus out. Yeah. Uh, so if you have that, we'll just yeah, keep I it. Yeah, I do. I separate them. them. They, yeah, so like people, just, have to, people have tried to tell me that my alien experiences were demons and I don't believe them. Yeah, I won't. I well, won't you, believe you it. You have to know your. You have to know your own experiences. One thing I've learned in my years of teaching the workshops that I do is I teach people strictly everything on a galactic level. I completely stay away from the paranormal. Uh, not, you know, I just, uh, especially on the show, um, uh, you know, and I honor, you know, but I think, yeah, you know, once you separate that stuff and you just stay focused on the galactic and the cosmic. It's so much stronger, so more, such a, so, so more powerful. But because you are an open, your consciousness is open. Obviously, if anyone's consciousness is open, it's going to bring all kinds of stuff there, and then you have to separate it. It's like, okay, this book goes over here, this book goes over there. This is my cosmic book. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That kind of stuff. Yeah. So you already know that. I think. Yeah, it's, I try to be yeah. like that because I'm really dynamic, so everything's kind of fractaled out with with each other. But um, I, I can separate it. Um, so my dreams, I've had a lot of dreams that have come true since 2004 mm-hmm. when I became a mother. I started seeing the number 42 everywhere. And I found out about um, Mayat's 42 universal laws from ancient Egypt. Mm. And I, I, I just felt like she was trying to speak to me and, and tell me stuff. The 42 universal laws, I asked people about if they know about those laws. Nobody knows about those laws. They've been mm-hmm. hidden from like society. Yeah, no, you're and, right. A uh, lot of things have been hidden. Yeah, and uh, I have a picture on my, um, I have it pinned on Twilight Zone Ma of my eyes, my eyes glitch. And I don't know if you're going to catch it while I'm talking, but a lot of people have told me since I was a kid that my eyes will like change really quick. And I've actually hmm. caught it on camera and, um, ah, my painting's falling. And, um, you want us to look at your eyes for a minute and see <laughs> what? So we should check to see if her eyes, what happens to your eyes now? Just like if you're talking to me, people right. will be like, they'll say, "Whoa, your eyes just like kind of flickered," and it, it, they caught it on camera before. And like a lot, I have a lot of pictures where my eyes just look. The brown part is like, is, yeah. it looks like it looks like a mirror, like like my brown part will just go away and it looks kind of grayish. Well, when my look black your eyes, I see like a center of light in the in the middle of your eyes. Like, well, everybody has this yeah, it's a reflection. Um, it's a reflection. Yeah. Yeah, but um. I, when I was a child, a lot of my um, friends would be like with me outside playing and it would start to get dark and it would be like, what's happening to your eyes? And like, I thought they were messing with me for a long time. I thought right. all these people, I thought they were picking on me or they're messing with me. Yeah. 
And then uh, when I was older, my, my teenage daughter took a picture of me and I was standing by a mirror and it showed the most craziest thing about my eyes. And I asked my daughter, I said, is that what you guys see when you're talking to me? And she goes, yeah, that's what we see. So I hmm. was like, cool. Interesting, and yeah. I, um, when I was, I had this elder who was like really cool. I haven't seen her in a long time, but she always told me that I was like a my lab, like a military military baby and i was actually born on a base you're born on a military she, base yeah but she said she said that when someone like me has these experiences with like ufos and encounters in my dreams that that i'm like um i don't know i don't even know what it is but supposedly they have us they have people like me on radar or something like that and i have i have aircraft jets flying over all the time all the time over yeah. your location yeah all the time uh, are, you, are you close to a military base yeah i that's where i was born that makes I sense was, yeah i was born and it's just like a town away and so but sometimes these these jets fly really close to my house and my mm -hmm. neighbors have my neighbors have said they've never seen anything like that like they're not supposed to fly that low yeah and i always think they're like they fly really low like to my house where, where it shakes my house do you think they're purposely doing that or do you think it's just a coincidence or a flight pattern? i think i think sometimes i feel like sometimes they're getting told the coordinates to go and they, they gotta come and do it because something up there wants to contact with me and so, just... you, so you think that they're doing it to try to prevent the spaceship and the beings on a spaceship from contacting you? They think by doing that, they're going to prevent the contact? Yeah, to me, I got the feeling mm. because I get these feelings and visions that they're saying, if you don't, if you don't stay away from her, like we're, we could easily just drop one of these. Like if yeah. you don't stay away from her. Thank you, Kate, for the uh, heart. I see that. Uh, I'm trying um, to you be know, careful still. with what I say because I know uh, things can get reported really quickly if I don't use special words. Yeah, no, no. But here, when we use carefulness, the thing is, if we have information, like you said, I think it was your father or somebody's in the military, or the uh, did you say there was a military connection? Yeah. Who was that? The father? Yeah, my dad. Okay. Does he have high security clearance? Um, he's you know? he hasn't been. He's retired now. Okay. But, but even though he's retired. When he was in a, a non-retired uh, state, what, did he have any connections with areas dealing with uh, the whole ET UFO thing that he never told you about, or did he never tell you anything? He spent most of his experience out in the ocean, and he said that um, he, you know, he just fixed airplanes, and mm -hmm. he, um, I don't know. I mean, like he never, like he, my dad's a square. <laughs> yeah, like, he never he, really like, talked about it much, right? But he know, yeah, he like he won't talk a lot about stuff. But um, sometimes I'll catch him telling me a story or so. But um, everything that happens to me, he just he's always called me a Jedi since I was a little kid. Like, like that's how he explains it to me uh, since yeah. I was little. And then when I got older, I saw like a movie or so, and then I understood why he was always telling me to stay on the good good side, because I because when I get angry and stuff when I was younger, if I got angry, like weird stuff would happen, like. Like my mom did, my, even my own mother didn't want to be around me. Only my dad could handle, uh, yeah. handle me. And um, now that I'm a mother and I have two kids with autism, out of five of my kids, I understand mm -hmm. what it's like being around a child whose mind is so open and says yeah. whatever's on it. Because yeah. like my, I have a daughter with autism and she like reads my mind all the time, <laughs> and yeah. it's it's weird like it's like i'm in a twilight zone like this isn't a regular reality that i live in so she but, has your daughter has a, a bit of your abilities yeah it comes from your genes all my so, kids yeah. do yeah yep. well not all I, my oldest daughter kind of like doesn't like the stuff i talk about she like wants to be straight like she's a firefighter you know she doesn't she don't right. like none of this weird stuff but my younger daughter who's nine she actually prevented me from being in an accident when I was on the road with her. She cried so bad and she never cried before, but she cried so extremely bad to get me to pull over. And as soon as I pulled over, this other car, oncoming car came in my lane, oncoming traffic. Oh my gosh. And if she and if she and if she wouldn't have cried and got me to pull over, we would have gotten hit oh by that God. car. Yeah. And it happened so quick. 
Wow. And she's really into like my daughter likes to watch stories about Skinwalker, and she calls. She thinks I'm a creature. She thinks I'm like a oh like a werewolf or something. Oh, uh, you're not one of those. No, you're not. I don't see so, that. We've gone camping and stuff, and uh, I love to go camping. And, and my whole life, ever since I was little, I've never been afraid. I, I have a I have a really big confidence. Like, yeah. Like like I'm in tune with this nature around me, and I'm like powered up but sometimes I, the dark force because i'm so in tune with things the polarity the dark force will pull me too sometimes and it'll even yeah. change my appearance where i will look ugly and i will look dark but then if you i'm happy how, and i'm feeling positive to, jen you want to know how to prevent that from happening ever yes tell me i can tell you right i i i work in christ consciousness cosmic christ consciousness i turn i teach workshops i'll be being doing workshops in Connecticut here in the U.S. as it gets warmer out, I take people off journeys and they keep a journal and uh, they go out of their body. Their bodies are completely intact. So to protect yourself, I'm going to give you uh, some things to work with to help prevent any negative energies from ever coming in, ET energies from trying to lower your vibration or whatever. Always put yourself, do you ever meditate? Um. When I was Not a little much. kid, I when I was a little kid, I meditated a lot naturally. I didn't have no teacher, but I just was always in the woods by myself. Right, that's a and, uh, doing it. Yeah. And so. just yesterday, I started painting again. Um, painting really calms my mind. Mm -hmm. I haven't painted in like probably a year or two. My partner passed away in 2022, so the oh, grief sorry, the grief really took me hard. But I also have experienced a lot with the other side since he's passed mm -hmm. away. I've seen a lot of things in that in that world the yeah. afterlife since my partner's so passed want, away so i'm i'm, I'm going to help you here I'm gonna, i do this with my guests on my show not only is this a spiritual ufo talk show but i'm also a teacher i try so to go I'm to church for the first month of january in my life like the my first time ever being in church i went for the whole month of january with my children mm -hmm. at a mormon church and i had to yeah. like, change the way i dressed and everything and i didn't know if i was doing the right thing but I've never read the Bible fully. so Right. So you don't need to go to church. Uh, and again, there's nothing against religions. But I'm here to bust the matrix. All religions are part of a matrix. Uh, but the true teachings that I teach is connecting with self. So what I want you to do is you can use higher dimensional Christ consciousness music. Believe it or not, there's a thing called Christ conscious ambient music. It operates at a certain vibrational frequency. When you listen to it, you can spend, you know, a half hour. You may be, and when you are leisure to sit there and close your eyes, you'll take some deep breaths and you're going to say, I am a Christed being of light. There's nothing to religion. I am a Christed being of light. I'm going to protect my, uh, my surroundings with Christed frequencies of energy. I am a galactic being of light. I'm going to protect myself with uh, energies and bubbles of energy around my, wherever I am. I'm going to protect all my children and myself. And you don't have to tell your children you're doing that. You can just set the energy frequencies. Once you yeah. do that, you will never, ever have any negative energies come by you, ET or not ET. The thing is, most people in many cases are spiritual and they're doing their thing, but they don't realize they have to put a protection around their location. So when I do this show, I, I work with the Ashtar Galactic Command, which is the highest level of Christ consciousness from other planetary worlds. So what I teach people on my show is, I put a bubble protection on my whole show. After my show is over, I have to close the portal because I have a portal. Evidently, my energy is so high that I have to close the portal. And then I have to send everything that's around me, attracted here, over to the other side after my show. People don't know this, but I do that. I do a cosmic prayer. I ask the angels to come in, the Ashtar command, Christ of beings come in. And then we send everybody out, and then we close the portal of light, and that's it. That's at the after I get off the air on my show here. So, yeah. you know, we all have these things because we attract energy because we that if we have any light in us, it attracts whatever's out there. So That's, put a bubble of protection around yourself. That's really important. My elder, she told me that about she told me about the pink bubble that she uses for what you just kind of explained uh, the bubble. I, right. I do that to keep my kids warm. Like if I'm out and it's cold or it's windy, I'll do like a bubble thing to keep the wind from hitting us really hard or I'll try to warm up the temperature with, mm -hmm. in the car or while we're out and about. I could do that. Um, it's hard for me to believe that anything would want to 
like it's hard for me to believe and this is really dumb but it's hard for me to believe that anyone would want to attack me like it, well, like they wouldn't they're, they're not going to attack you it's just that huh? you always because you because you hold a lot of light in you and you do and you have this beautiful energy you want to put a bubble of protection around wherever you go because you're living in a society where you're going to have different energies crossing over you can go down the street another energy might not be at your same energy and might say well look, that was really weird well, you want also, to kind of put a protection. people like to touch me a lot when i'm in public they like to hug me and touch my mm -hmm. arm so i i feel like the christ in me has to be like that like i have to be open for strangers right. And it's, 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 it's confusing. It's confusing to me to understand what, what I'm doing mm -hmm. because growing up, they teach you something else. And then when you get mm -hmm. older, your consciousness awakens and stuff. But, um, mm -hmm. I just, I feel like, um, I don't know. I feel like I open up my mind a lot because I want to be like available for people who reach out. Um, yeah. like sometimes I'll have like a dream and i've had a lot of dreams in the astral world where i'm saving people like in situations mm -hmm. and then the next day i'll show up on the news or something happened and yeah. i'll be like yeah because i was part of that in my astral world yeah so <laughs> and i'll be like a, i'll be happy and proud but then when i'm doing that i've had visitors that are like hey who are you because you're flying so fast and you caught our attention and then God's like, just let it be, Jen. Just like, don't, don't hesitate for anybody. You got right, me, right. like your father watching over you. But it, it confuses me because I'm so empath that I start to feel, I feel sorry for like all kinds of different things. And then because I can see people's yeah. history, I see people's yeah. history and I'll know why they're like that. Yeah. No, but, you've got a gift. You got a gift for sure. Just also because you've got that gift. It doesn't mean you should stop um, being that person that's there to transform and help people. That a gift is a very special thing when you come to Earth. You're a, you're a star seed, so you came from the stars, and because of that, you have you come in the human form with all those gifts from the stars from whatever planet you come from, or you'll, you'll eventually remember where it was. That's why you have the spaceships, the lava beings you mentioned earlier, and all these other space beings. You're connected very clo cl uh, closely to the stars beyond Earth. So uh, thank you, Lizzie, for the bracelet. Um, I think you are gifted in so many cosmic ways. It's just always protect yourself, though, because you can still do the mission I think, work. I pray a lot to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's my protection. I feel like mm -hmm. Jesus is so advanced that yeah. I am that he, he comes into my dreams. I've, fl I've flown with Jesus in a dream before, and mm -hmm. he wanted me to fly up to the top with him, but I could see on the bottom that people couldn't fly, and I felt sorry for them. And then if, all of a sudden, I like I felt like I couldn't fly until these until these people could fly, and I'm still mm -hmm. trying to understand what that dream meant. Like, you know, one yeah, minute. Well, you know, if I you meditate, if you meditate, Jen, on that dream because you remember it, just ask in the dream. Just go into a meditative state. With the Christ ambient music, uh, you can probably get on YouTube. There's some great videos of Christ consciousness music. It will amp up the frequencies and ask, okay, what does this dream mean? And listen to the answer. You'll have the answer within you. You know, it, it'll be your answer. But it'll come from a higher level of yourself. Yeah, and if people if people call me chosen one, I don't like how that feels. Like I like I don't like no, people there's... calling me that. Like yeah. I have to be humble. And if people tell me yeah. I have gifts or something, I don't even like to hear that either. No. Like, I it's don't. always and good to be humble, right? People have called me like a witch, and I was like, that don't, yeah, that's that, not that right. don't feel like it that, either. Yeah. And then they call me a shaman, and I was like, nah, I don't feel, I don't feel like that either. They, yeah. they call me like um, a prophet. I don't feel that either. Like, yeah, I'm above that terminology. Happen. That's how I feel. Yeah, people, they, people try to put labels, Jen, on you. Don't just knock those labels off and say, nope. Put a shield up against all those people projecting labels on you. That's what people do. They like to put projected labels, you know, like you're this, you're that. No one can be labeled. You are who you are. You know, you know who you are. When people try to project yeah. their energy on you of what you should be or what you, who you should be, I just disregard most of that because that is coming from somebody else's consciousness, not my own, not your own. Your yeah. consciousness is your own. Your spirit is your own. Your beingness is your own. So yeah. you, know, you, own it, you, live it, you are it. You are you know, a light worker. You are here I to do what you're going to do. I can channel like um, 
like villains and like bad people, like I'll I'll channel them sometimes, and it's really tough on me. It's really hard mm. on me to see things like the back picture of, of like agendas and stuff. Like it's mm-hmm. it's been hard on my psyche seeing yeah. things that, that God wants me to see. I'll wake up yeah. crying sometimes. Like, uh, well, you're gifted. You have visions. You know, you came here yeah. with, with a lot of abilities. You actually, as I'm listening to your story, you're an amazing person. You have been. Uh, you you're very open to your cosmic self. You you are totally mm-hmm. awake on every level. And speaking of awake, we have thirty nine thousand likes here. We have 164 people do the cosmic math. We want to get to 100,000 likes tonight. I want everybody in the show. I do this every night. Everybody has to get involved. No one's going to be left out. You can't be on this, folks. I want everybody tapping the screen, not one or two people that are going to lose their fingers. Everybody collectively tap their screen. We want to get to 100,000 likes before 1 a.m. We're going to stay on until 1 a.m. in the morning. But I want to get 100,000 likes right now. Everybody, everybody, everybody get involved. And I'll be watching those numbers. I'm multidimensional, so I can look at the numbers with my eyes. I can look at my host, my uh, guest here, and I can look at the screen. That's what the commander does. So get it going, folks. You're watching Encounters, the late-night spiritual UFO talk show. Our guest is Jen uh, out in California, and some, we're having some wonderful conversation. And Jen's a great guest. You have really a great energy about you. Do you know that? I've been told that people get really yeah. happy when they see me. They they'll say, "Where have you been?" And it's just someone who works at a gas station. They're just so excited to see me. Yeah. It surprises me when people like my energy because I have so much going on in my body, um, like current events, um, future events, past events, um, and I'm just like a little point in this matrix moving along. Yes. And they'll say, oh, "Hey, I like you. Like, I want to see you." And I'm like. What do you mm-hmm. feel about me? Because I feel like I'm in a fucking tornado or something. Yeah, you'll we'll have to watch the language part, but uh, oh, yeah, you sorry, didn't but yeah, yeah. that's okay. I'll, you didn't realize I'll feel it. dark. Like I'll have dark energy. Like I'll feel like I'm like like bad and stuff. And people yeah. will remind me, like, no, we, like you have a, you're good. And and it really surprises me because I, sometimes I thought my gifts were gonna go away or or like um, I'm gonna stay down forever but i always uplift like i'm like i'm like i bounce back like from a lot of stuff that's trying to take me down like my parents neglected me as a kid they were party animals um i have had bad relationships um i've been knocked down before but i've always gotten back up i just and like i i'm surprised at myself like how i can recharge and um like i'll see it because like i can tell about people like if they have a low light if they're dimmed i can see it and, and if they're bright and vibrant and sober, I can see that. Yeah. And I can see that about myself. I can see I can see when I'm glowing and yeah. I can see yeah. when I'm not. It, it's really weird. But you know what, Jen? When you meditate, when you you know, be on the show, I want you to really focus on the ambient Christ your conscious music. To let it vibrate into your just listen to it, breathe, take a deep breath, let go. And as you do that on a daily basis, you'll feel an upliftment with all the good stuff you have. You'll feel even better. You'll feel more up. Your whole cellular structure will be vibrating in such a light. You are a light. It will be the most massive amount of light for you. And that light will be felt everywhere. You'll feel it. I mean, I know you can feel it. When I was a little girl, I was was left home alone, and there was somebody trying to break in my house, and I was crying real bad. I didn't even know what prayer was, but I was crying to myself, and I I was up on the top uh, staircase, just waiting for something to happen to me. I was scared. And I heard yeah. like a harp. I heard like a harp sound. And I heard like yeah. a voice say Jennifer. And it was the most beautiful voice with the harp sound. And that mm. totally made me realize that angels are out there. Like oh, yeah, they, angels are out there. They're everywhere. They you heard have, me you crying. Have you have angels protecting you. We just uh, Yeah, and as know. soon as I heard it, the guy the guy left my house alone. I couldn't yeah. hear it no more. Well, the angels protect you. I mean, uh, yeah. if people would realize they have angels, I have angels uh, that are with me. I have also space people that are with me from off planet with me when I do these broadcasts. Uh, you can't see them, but they are here with me. They're here wherever I go. They're, uh, they are basically cloaked. So their whole physical being is cloaked so you can't see them. But they're there to protect the angels uh, as well. 
from outer space, they will come and protect you because you're connected and your space friends will also be there to protect you too. Yeah, I've, I've, I have memories of so many different creatures that are not on this planet. Mm -hmm. And it's like, um, I can only explain it with like, just like how when you see like Star Wars or like any other Guardians of the Galaxy and you see those other other characters, creatures, like that's exactly oh, yeah. how it is. Like, it is. Yeah. It's a dynamic. The way creations and hybrids can form, it's, mm -hmm. it's like infinite. It's... It's just like yeah, nature. It's like all the flowers, like all the different insects that we have on this planet. It's so, like, <laughs> so much. It's a it's lot. So it's, much. it's a lot. When you yeah. have your, your consciousness is so awakened, you are so awake. You're not even living in the matrix. Do you realize <laughs> you're not? You know, when you're not living in the matrix, you're doing what you're doing. If you're living in the matrix, you'd be coming on here like a zombie saying, uh, "I am a scientist." Um, I don't understand your belief systems, but you're not like that. You're this person that is going to be who you are. You're going to be that galactic human being that's out there to bust the matrix. And you're doing it in your own way, which is beautiful. And there's no one way to do it. You do it your way. I do it my way. The next person does it their way. That's the beautiful part of being awakened when you're a star yeah. seed. But I want to tell you that because I really feel like I need to get this off my chest is mm -hmm. that as much as I look like I'm good, and you might think, oh, you have good energy, you know, I have, I could, I could send out really bad energy, and I could, I've, I've hurt people, like, um, just looking at them, um, mm -hmm. my, you want, you want to find out a way to stop that, that it makes me feel so bad, there? but do you want to get rid of that, that's why I try to be stay good all the time, so nobody gets hurt, right, but if you do the meditations, like I said, Listen to the ambient Christ conscious music on a daily basis. Focus on that and just say, I am not going to let this other part of me be here anymore. I am letting you go. You served your purpose. No more anger. Whatever uh, created that in my life, you're going to go. Don't feel lonely, anger. Just go back to God. You're going to send the anger back to the creator. So when you yeah. send the anger that you have in you back to the creator, that anger can never, ever come back. You say, okay, anger. I thank you for being who you were. I'm now sending you back to the Creator. I'm now going to operate fully in my body in Christ consciousness, in love consciousness. I will never get angry at somebody, look angry at somebody again. If you follow some of the things I'm saying here, I guarantee you, you will never, ever have that in your system. Oh, I believe again. you. When, okay? I'm, when I'm feeling really like, uh, when I'm feeling really positive, like when I went to church for the month, I mm -hmm. felt really happy. I liked being around people. I, I'm actually not a, a solitude person. I'm I'm meant to be around people. Right. And I liked it. And um, I liked that my kids were in Sunday school. And I liked having people call me sister, Sister Jennifer. Yeah. And they were this one elder lady. She's like, you're special. I can tell you're special. <laughs> and I, I just liked it because mm -hmm. she was like hugging up on my shoulder, you know, and I could tell that yeah. she was like, she was feeling off the vibes and stuff. And yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yep, this is where God wanted me to be because I felt like um, when I was trying to tra translate that dream with the people not being able mm -hmm. to fly, I was like, are those people who are at church? Because there was like a huge temple like that I was flying around. Yeah. And it was so easy to fly. Like it's no it's no hard thing at all to fly in my dreams. And um, yeah. it confused me why other people couldn't fly. And I, I'm, right. sh I'm trying to yeah. understand that. Hey, I'm flying in the yard. When I was a kid, I have to tell you a story you know, again. This is uh, encounters. Have a better one. Yes. Oh, wait, what happened? On. You just turned. Wait. Oh no! Oh. I I just didn't want my son to embarrass me. He's coming in here. Okay, no problem. <laughs> so I was gonna say, when I was a kid, I had I had dreams. I thought they were dreams. I would actually. Uh, it was for a long time it would happen. I'd be flying above my house in a clear blue sky. And so I'm flying. I'm able to fly wherever I want to go. Now, that was a dream state. It was, a, it was clear as me looking at you on the camera here. I don't know if anyone else had those dreams going up, but I would have these dreams that I can just float and fly anywhere I wanted above the houses. And uh, I was unlimited. I can go anywhere I wanted. And I believe in truth we do have that ability if we wake up to that consciousness. You know, uh, I think yeah. we do have that, because well, you're sharing about flying. I remember that from my own life when I was a kid. I was able to do the same thing. I was able like, oh, well, I'm able to fly. No fear. 
it's almost like I was operating in a different conscious state. You know? Yeah, I didn't have those flying dreams till I, till I got older. Like, a lot of my gifts got really uh, heightened when I became a mother. Like, mm-hmm. it, like, birthed me or something, yeah. having children. It like, it, like, transformed me into, like, like goddess mode or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting how things get activated, you know. And, yeah, activated. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's, acti- it's all, all activations. All, all, a lot of people in this audience have been activated. They'll tell us their stories or comments about, yeah, I can, I can understand that. A lot of our audience has been activated over the years from different periods. Some people are just activating themselves now on a galactic level of consciousness. So uh, it's a beautiful experience to have. You're a delight to have on the show. And I thank you so much for sharing some of your stories. Keep us up to date with all those galactic activities. We want to ask a question before you let me yes. go. What do you, what yes. do you think about me smoking MJ? You think that's not good for me? Cause I've been doing it for a long time and I can smoking tell that like, I'm not supposed MJ? to, pollute, yeah, I'm not supposed to pollute my body and um, yeah. I don't drink. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't do anything else, but I smoke MJ and something's been telling me that I'm not supposed to be smoking MJ. Like I gotta be pure and not eat right. meat so and all that's crazy a- stuff. That's a, well. I let me say when I was in college, I, I uh, back in the seventies, we did in Vermont, do that so to speak. But on the campus, we weren't just doing it all the time. We did it when you know we'd be hanging out and uh, and all that. And um, I know it's legal in a lot of states now, and yeah. spiritual people do do smoke it. But you know, as long as you're not doing it, I think you're the things that I talk about is. Uh, I don't drink. I don't. Uh, I don't. I just uh, stay away from anything that is a drug. I don't um, anything that will keep me from being unclear in my consciousness. I have to because of the mission work I'm doing. I completely keep all that clear. You know, if I have a little sip of wine or something with dinner once in a while, but I don't drink to drink. Um, I basically drink my apple cider and water, uh, and uh, oh, I yeah, think that. You know, that's what I, you know, but in terms of that, if it, you feel it doesn't affect your consciousness, uh, I think, uh, <laughs> hey, crazy Lou, I think uh, if it doesn't affect your consciousness, that's fine. But all these other things that are out there, the, the alcohol and all that stuff, I just, uh, because I'm doing such important work and a lot of people are out there, that just not just me, everybody is, including yourself. I just tell people, stay away from all that stuff. Keep your, your body is your temple. It's your yes, and that's, that's what I was thinking too about the dream. Like maybe my the temple represented my body. Yeah, your your know. body is your temple, and yeah. so to do the mission work. You have to keep your temple clear. To have clear communications with the space people that are positive, they want you to keep your conscious clear. If things get in your system from cigarettes, from drugs, and everything else, it's going to pollute your system, and it's going to die. It's going to it's going to make your consciousness blurry. Your consciousness is not going to be clear. If I, like, when I was a little kid, they put me on medication for ADD, but now that I'm older, like, if I didn't smoke MJ I've, and I just was, like, a sober-minded person, I, I don't know if mm-hmm. I could handle it because I'm, I'm thinking about so much stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the, the smoking slows my brain down, and I know it does. But you know but what will I, happen if you meditate regularly, like an hour a day, whenever you can, and use the ambient uh, meditation music and the Christ conscious music and cut away from the smoking part, you won't need that because you'll be clearing everything up without the smoke. You'll be elevating in a peaceful state where you'll be calm without the smoke. You don't need it. You can calm down with the elevated music. It will calm your whole nice. body down in two minutes. Yeah, I as a as a seer, I know that smoking doesn't doesn't lead you to like no. health. It's gonna make it worse. It doesn't help. Yeah. You know, people and, can uh, say, "Oh, you know, I'm doing this stuff, and I'm, you know, I, I, you know, I'm doing this stuff, and it doesn't affect me." It does. They're not being honest to themselves. You are. You know, it affects yeah. you. And I just tell mm-hmm. people to be in a Christ cosmic state of contact with your space brothers and sisters if you're a contactee, and I think you are. You always want to be clear, and they also want you not to be distorted by doing these things. They want to be able yeah. to contact you from a clear state. I, I, I full heartedly know 
without a doubt that if I was if I didn't smoke MJ and I let myself be sober that I would probably be one of the most sharpest people and then I would yeah. want to go and and go take people on like who yeah. are very corrupted and I and I would yeah. go at them yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I do need to be like super sober because Sometimes I get so frustrated. I'm like, we need this, we need that, and I'm like, oh wait, I'm that. I'm I'm yeah. I'm that. I'm supposed to be the answer. I need to get off this shit and go help the people. <laughs> become yeah. like an activist. Just become like a spokesperson. All the passions that you have, because they will start to deteriorate. Being in the matrix, I will start losing it. Like, oh, I forgot about my dreams. I forgot, but they they yeah. will come. The dreams won't let you forget. They're going to remind you. Oh, the dreams are your cosmic dreams. They're your remembrance of who you are. So your dreams are very important, especially when you have those cosmic dreams. You never want to forget them. You know, so the way I look at life to help you, Jen, and I tell people this, I don't look at many websites. The reason why I don't look at many websites is because websites are written by people, people with brains. People with brains who write websites have an agenda. They all have an agenda. Every website, I don't care what the topic is, where it is, where it's at. It's all based on an agenda of a human being that has created a website or whatever it is. Where I get my information from is from source. So when I look for information, the only thing I look at websites for, for information, is my Ashtar Command News page, where I post things with crop circles or spaceship sightings. Those things have no agenda because those are visuals of something that came from beyond Earth. So the only agenda there is to blow the matrix and let people see that there are spaceships coming here from everywhere in the universe. Yeah, I have or a picture of a spaceship. Spaceships? Yeah, I have a picture on my um on my pinned on my account. It's a, a stealth ship in the shape of a triangle in the clouds. Perfect. Oh, we'll have to take a look at that. Yeah, perfect triangle yeah. cut out of a, in a cloud. Well yeah, that's a, a beautiful floor. That's kind of a beautiful thing, you know. Um, check my main page out. You'll see the newest stuff I just posted. Uh, Key West, Florida, last 24 hours. Uh, these clouds look like spaceships, very perfectly circular. Probably went right through the clouds and created uh, like a permanent round symbol. You'll see it. And those ships probably went into the ocean off the coast of the Key West uh, 24 hours ago, maybe 48 hours ago. Yeah, I've seen a lot. Um, I'm really fascinated with the ocean too. I have a, I have a lot of dreams and memories of being underwater, living, living in colonies. Oh, interesting. And stuff. Yeah. So when you say underwater, in those underwater dreams, what were, what was that like? Can you explain that story a little bit? Um, it's like domes underwater, uh, tubes, like hallways that are clear. And um, I remember when I was a little kid, I would actually draw the creature. And I still remember what it looked like. It was very, um, it was like human, but fish. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I remember like these gills and it had like a really cute baby face. Like and, a mermaid thing or? Yeah, like and it had like, um, like flipper feet, but it was. Yeah, like a looked, mermaid, a flipper. It looked like of. a human baby, but it also looked like it was mixed with like fish or something. Right. And um, yeah. I, I, I drew this when I was little and I used to draw like, my house is under the ocean and it would mm-hmm. be like little bubbles. It looked like bubbles underwater with air, but there there was like there were like houses or whatever and all yeah. connected and stuff. And um I just remember swimming with like I have dreams of swimming really fast. Like like if I'm a mm-hmm. dolphin or a, a fish or something. Like in the dream. Um, yeah. yeah, and I've had dreams of being in Antarctica and like underground tunnels and I'm with like um different wells that are white um hmm. and i've like i just i've i've had dreams with like entities that i feel like was god who was like telling me like we're swimming in the ocean naked and there's sharks around us and i was scared that they were going to attack me but he said that like i'm safe because i'm with him yeah. and as long as i have my hand with his nothing none of them were going to harm me and we ended up going to like a slab, like a rock. And yeah. it was just the most peaceful, lovable feeling that I could explain. And and I just love that dream, you know, because whenever I feel like things are kind of getting close, 
on me and the planet and I, I feel like pressure and stuff. I feel, no, no, just hold on to that hand. You're going to, you're going to be all right. Just hold on to the hand. Don't let go. Right. Don't let go. Yeah. That's a beautiful story. Well, Jen, I want to thank you for being thank on here. You. You've been fantastic. I asked everybody to say, clap your hands for Jen. Thank her. And see, <laughs> see how easy it is to be on here. Uh, and you're always welcome hot. back, you know, <laughs> nothing to be nervous about. So, I hope you enjoyed coming on here and sharing for the first time some of your experiences. I do enjoy it. I just wish I could get rid of that nervousness that that whatever happens to my body, like my palms will start to get wet. My armpits yeah. will start to get warm. Like I get oh, well. so <laughs> stage fright is what it's called. Yeah, stage fright. Well, now now you're famous on my show. So, uh, you know, in a, in a good way, very humble way. I didn't think you were going to call me up. I never wanted it. You never know with me. I, 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 I'm I, very spontaneous with people. Nobody in this – I can take somebody in here, and I'll see they have over 200 or 1,000 people. Somebody in here, I can just pull them up, and they'll be like, he's pulling me up. Uh-oh, what am I going to do now? You never <laughs> know, folks. I can pull somebody up here out of the blue moon, and I know that everybody here has some sort of an experience, even though they're not saying anything. If I pull you up here, you know – you're going to be a guest. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even tell you all the UFO stories either. But I'll come back another time. I want, to, I want to hear more of the UFO story. You all, well, share one more UFO story before you go. Okay, well, my partner and I always like to stare at the stars. I've been staring at the stars every night. It's like a ritual I have to do. And um, I really stare at them a lot. Like, I just zone out and stare at a star. I just love it so much. Like, that's my family. I've been saying that that's my family style. Right. Cool. But we were out there, and this we've this really bright white star came down like low and it it was it was like just really strange because it, it was a star that we were just staring at but then it started to like move and it was coming down and it wasn't really close to us but it flew like over us and um i like to think about that memory a yeah. lot because my, my partner passed away okay. and i I'm, I'm hoping that the cosmic beans. Oh, my lights just flickered in my room. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> but, um, These things happen. I can never make it up what happens to people. On yeah, my and I, I'm hoping that the cosmic beans, like, I don't know. I just want to reunite with my partner when I pass away. And I feel like oh. because of the stars that I'm going to. <sighs> yeah. And, you know, if you ever, what we call pass away, you really don't pass away. Yeah. You'll actually go into your light body, into another you know, frequency of yourself, which will be a living, live being of light. So um, that's a whole other story. But uh, yeah, I've yeah. seen I've seen like rivers of uh, auras and space. Like, like that's why I believe everybody like nobody's left behind. Everybody's together yeah, no in, a, in a flow, yeah. like in a flow of the universe. Right, and everybody is part of the multiverse, the universe. We're all from yeah. different planetary systems. And living this Earth life, we're here to experience Earth, but we're here to do our mission, galactic mission work here, so to speak. Yeah. And you're doing just fine, so I appreciate that so much. I'm going to try and to listen to that. Uh, where did you say I could find that music again? The meditating okay, music? Okay, you, um, you're going to look on YouTube. It's a lot of it's on YouTube. You're going to look for ambient Christ conscious music, mm -hmm. ambient, A-B-I-E-N-T, Christ, C-H-R-I-S-T, Consciousness, Music. There's plenty Thank of videos you. on there with music like that. Use that music. It'll amp up your frequency like crazy. Okay. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Thank you for being on, Jen. You've been a blessing. Thank you so for letting me share. And everybody follow Jen. Everybody <laughs> follow each other. Let me see here. Did I do this? Here we go. And you're watching Encounters. Now, my focus is on all of you. We have 64.3. We need to get up to 100,000. We're at 12.39 p.m. on the East Coast. I want everybody, everybody, Hans Zimmerman is good too, yes. I want everybody to tap with your fingers on the screen on your phone. Everybody tap. Thank you for the roses, friends with furries. Thank you so much. Everybody tap. This is tap time. Hey, uh, Jen, thank you for the roses so much. We appreciate that. Everybody tap. It's like a mantra. Everybody has to tap. I can make a song out of this. Everybody tap on the screen. If you know what I mean, you got to tap. 
to get to a hundred thousand. Everybody tap on the screen if you know what the commander means. If you tap on the screen, we can do it. Tap on the screen, one hundred thousand. That's what I mean. You see, I can sing for you guys too. I'll sing if you tap. <laughs> Jeanette, thank you for the finger heart. And my cat's sleeping, so she's not going on tonight. I think I opened my account. Ah, Gramps. Ah, Gramps, I can put you on as a guest now. We're bringing Gramps on. Gramps, you can now accept my request, and I'm going to put you on here. Gramps have 700 and something followers. Uh, so, Gramps. I just invited you on the show. Just press the accept button, and we'll have you on here. We will definitely have the Gramps on here. Where is he? Where is Gramps? I'm going back to the Gramps. Here he is. He opened his account. He has 711 followers. So I just put him I'm. I'm not sure if he... Gramps, if you can hear me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to try to get you back on here. What's going on here? Is he on here? Oh, Gramps, I'm going to disconnect you and reconnect you. It's a TikTok thing. I'm re disconnecting. I'm going to bring you back on here. It's something with the technology. So, Gramps, I want you to come back on. You should be fine. Let me see if I can find you here again. I'm going to do it again. Something with the TikTok thing here. There he is. There's Gramps. I just pressed the button here to bring you on. Press the button and save. Press the button back and save. We'll put you on the air, on the show. But this has been happening. It happens with some other people. I've been watching some other TikTokers have the same problem. Okay, he's, now he's on, I think. Gramps is our next guest. Hey, there we go. And good more, good evening. Welcome to the show. Hey, Dave. How you doing? Good, you with us, good, good. And yourself? Yeah, what's, what's up? So I heard, so tell us about your UFO experience. So tell us about your radio experience. It sounds like How you have many? a radio. Can you turn the radio down? You're echoing. <laughs> Hang on. You there? Yeah, we're here. Now we can hear you. So whereabouts are you on the planet? I'm in Iowa. Iowa, okay. So tell us, you were mentioning something about some UFO areas, and can you explain what happened? You recorded them, I think? Yeah, it's been going on for a couple of years. Okay. Oh, and kinds so of. Absolutely. Oh, abs absolutely beautiful viewables. So what year did it start happening when you had these uh, UFO encounters? <laughs> well, I think my first one was like 1974 or 76. Okay. And when you had that encounter in 74, 76, can you describe what the UFO looked like, how close it was to where you were at the time? Yeah, there was a bunch of us, and all of us saw it. There was probably 20 people sitting outside, and we all saw this big, massive amount of lights, probably, you know, maybe eight, ten lights in the sky, and they split and went everywhere, and, like, everybody freaked out. <laughs> well, yeah. That was, was that back the first time? then. Well, were a lot of people freaking out because it was the first time they saw something like yeah, that? Yeah, it was the first encounter. Yeah, that, that, obviously you probably freaked out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hi, Bert, thank you. Uh, so, uh, as yeah, you had but, uh, of... Oh, 
Okay, so as you had so many of these encounters Go ahead. of the visual uh, UFOs, did you ever have visitations at any point in your life with the years of experience with that? You know, through all the years, I've, um, you know, I've had different encounters at different times because I camp and hunt and fish and do all the stuff. And I've seen a lot yeah. of lights and I've seen a lot of things and through all my years, right? I mean, just because you're outside, you watch the skies. That's what yeah. you do. But have but, you had any uh, visitation? I really, I really didn't have I didn't have any encounters until this past summer. Really? Let's get into that. What happened then, this past summer? <clears throat> well, like I said, I'm I I I watch the sky all the time, and I sit out at night. You know, so um, I sit out back, and in the summer, I'm sitting out back and watching the lights, and I, I do it every night. It's just my thing because. I like the stars, I like to gaze, I like to see things, and um, he, uh, and this is really hard for me to explain because I've tried to explain it to I don't know how many people, but nobody's ever understood it, but um, sitting in a chair, watching the sky, and looking at the trees, you know, they're a black I mean, literally, a black orb whizzed past me, and within a second, a light orb passed the same route, like it was chasing wow. it. Wow, that's wild. That 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 blew me away. Did you get to videotape any of that, or no? It happened so quickly. That, I don't know if you could. Have. No shit, it happened. Yeah, it happened so fast. I wouldn't even had a chance to get my camera on me. <laughs> yeah, no, I figure. I figure. Yeah, that would have to slow down a bit for you. If we're covering, then maybe we're talking better. seconds. Maybe for seconds. Yeah, you would never be able to videotape it. Um, we're talking. That's we're talking seconds. Wow. Yeah, we're talking seconds. Well, that, that was one. I mean, but I, you know, what I see in the skies all the time is. You know, I can't. I don't take my phone to the to sit outside all the time. You know, and yeah. when I see something interesting, you know, I, that actually stay stays for a, a prolific, prolific amount of time. I I come back in yeah. and get my phone and go out and try to tape it or video it, whatever. But I see, I see things in the skies every night and if i wow. put a count on it i would say on average to eight wow. eight to twenty times a night wow you're in a very hot spot area for ufo ufo activity we call that a hot well, spot yeah i mean I, I know what it is yeah i mean i i i uh worked in aviation and worked on aircraft and everything for for years, um, so I, I know airplanes, lights, the speed that they travel. You know, I knew, I watch all that all the time. So you know, I know what is and what isn't, and what I do see. I mean, and 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 the satellites. Okay, I mean, and how they traverse the universe, whatever. Blah blah blah. Yeah, the shit I see. Is north, sea, yeah. north, south, east, west, blah, 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 blah. Every direction you can think of, bright lights, faster than hell, all the time, every night. So, what do you think, with all this stuff happening over the years where you are in that hot spot, what do you think the reason is that you're having so much UFO activity where you are? Well, I think it's a calling. Did you say? Did you say the word colony? I, I think it's a calling. As, as oh, call. weird as that may okay. sound, I think it's a calling. Yeah, the calling. Okay, I got you. So I mean, I think that I have 
too many. I have too many, too many things going on that are not coincidence. It's yeah. intuition. It's that ever that happened every day to me through the day in my life of work and everything else. That it's like, I. How do I explain that? It just happens. Right. So, do you think that they're telling you the intelligence? You think that's weird? So you think that, no, I don't think it's weird at all. I think it's interesting. I think. Do you think that they're trying to tell you that you have a connection with them, the space people? I absolutely think that there is. There's a contact trying to tell me something because since I tapped into this and I started asking and bringing them forward, yeah, everything started happening. Yeah. Everything started happening. And I and I and everything that's happening yeah, it's like yeah. where did that come from? How did that happen? You know, it's just constant. Yeah, have you ever thought of uh, Gramps meditating, telepathically yeah. asking when you see them, "Who are you? Where are you from?" Because if you do that, they will answer you. You know how to brother. I meditate every day. I meditate every day. Okay. Not yet. I mean, I sit back in my chair and I try to clear my mind every day and every night. And even in the mornings, you know, when I wake up, you know, in the middle of the night, I'm trying to clear my mind and ask for help and bring it forward. And, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just doing what I think they're asking. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're doing a fantastic job. I have a feeling that if they haven't contacted you on a physical level, the space people in those various types of ships are saying, we're here, we're ready to make contact. You still have to be the one that's ready to make contact. And that would go for anybody. Oh, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and, I, and I, I, ask, I ask repeatedly all the time when I'm sitting outside and they're cruising by and they're, I, I'm waving at them. I, I mean, I'm probably like a stupid fucker in the block. You know, I'm raising oh, my hand no, and waving let, by. Hey, come on. Right? Come hey, down yeah, here. Yeah, but, meet me, meet me, meet me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm just trying to tell people, not just you, everybody. Uh, just let's leave all that other language out. Just like this. Just, 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 that's one of the things you can show. Oh, I'm you. sorry. You didn't know that, I'm but sorry. now you do. You're okay. But, um, yeah, I think they do see you. I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they can view you from their ship and they can find your location, which I think is pretty phenomenal. That the one thing you want, you want to ask is obviously. Well, you, for how many. Take, you want to ask uh, where are you from? Who are you? What planet? For how many that come from? over all the time? Yeah. For, for how many that come over all the time that I see in every direction that I, I mean, every time I see one, I talk to them, okay? I don't know, maybe it's weird, but, you know, I let them know that, hey, I'm here. I'm free for the contact. I let them know every time, yeah. every day, every night. And I've seen these guys in the daytime. That's wow. the screwiest thing. Wow. Well, we're getting close to 1 a.m. on the East yeah, Coast it, of the you know. Go ahead. What's well, up? I want to thank you for being on here. And you're always welcome to come on here. And uh, I'm going to check your page out to see some of your videos that you might have up on your page and your TikTok. Um, so yeah, I thank you so much for being a guest here. Yeah, check rest, them out. We'll, we'll definitely check them out. Check out his videos. I will definitely be doing that. You're watching Encounters, the late night UFO spiritual talk show. Gramps has been our guest. And uh, Jen was on before that. We want to thank Jen for being on with us. And just all the good people out here.
who are watching from all over the world. Thanks for being on Encounters. Please join us again over the weekend for another edition of Encounters. And again, Gramps, thanks again for being here. We're almost at 100,000 uh, likes. Chat, thank you for the flowers. I mean, the roses. Thank you, my man. All right. You take care, brother, and uh, be well. Okay. And check out Gramps' uh, page. I want to also say we're at 83.6. In the next five minutes, I want to hit 100,000. I want to hit, Gail, thank you for the uh, roses. So Encounters wants to hit 100,000 uh, likes tonight. Uh, we're at 83.8. That means everybody tap. Everybody tap. Everybody follow, tap, follow, tap, follow, tap. You follow me and tap, like, and follow, and tap. You know, I can make a song out of this. 84,000 or 84.1. Can we do it before 1 o'clock? I think we can. I think with everybody's help, we can get this up to 100,000 easily. 84, 6, 84, 7, or 84, 8, 84, 9, 85. Let's get up to 100,000, folks. 85. We're still in the 85s. 85, 2, 85, 4, 85, 5. Almost there. 85, 7, 85. Okay. 86. Let's get everybody on this. I know there's only a few people tapping. If we have 155 people tap, tap, tap really good, we can get up to 100,000 before 1 o'clock. 86.8. This is the one thing. I include everybody in the show here. Even if you're not talking with me on the show, you're included as part of the studio audience. 87.5, 87.6. We're getting there. We're getting there, folks. This has been Encounters. And I just finished my last drop of apple cider for tonight, which means that's the end of tonight's show. Uh, please follow me, follow each other. We want to get to 100,000 followers before summer to expand our show to many more people, let people know about the show, and that would be great. 89.6, we're at 89.7. We're almost at 100,000. 89.9, 90.2. Let's keep it going, everybody. I want everybody tapping the screens. Every single viewer, everywhere, all over the world right now. 90.8. Uh, good night, Deborah. Good night, everybody. Laura from Chicago, good to see you. Friends and friends, have a good night, everybody. Love and light. We're at 91.7, 91.9, 92. I feel like we're getting ready for the cosmic ball to come down in uh, in new york city on broadway 92.5 we're almost there 92.6 92.7 come on we can do it we got enough people on here let's get this thing going here i want every single person to be proactive everybody that's like clapping like like if you're in a studio audience and you're clapping onwardly clapping yes you're supposed to galactic overlord just tap your screen tap the screen to get us up to 100,000 likes. That's all you have to do is just tap your screen on your phone. Everybody, just tap your screen. How can I start a live show? Uh, let's see here. Start Truther. What you need to do is you have to get to 1,000 followers, and then you can actually go live, and you can do any kind of Broadcast on TikTok you wish. You just have to figure out how to create that. We're at 96.6, so we're so close. We're so close. And we might, we're at 1259 a.m. I want to hit 100,000. Come on, let's do it real quick. Real quick. We're at 98. Man, we're so close. If everybody taps, I swear we're going to get to 100,000 right now. 98.6, 98.8, Unencounters, 99. We're close. You're getting us close, folks. Let's go real quick here. It's 1 a.m. Are we going to make it? It's 1 a.m. Bam. All right. Everybody, congratulations. Everybody clap. You all did a great job at the end of the show. We got to 101,000. Very good. 
your desire is triggering the uh, whatever that might be. Jen, thank you. Everybody, thank you. We'll be on again this weekend, usually around 11 o'clock, sometimes a little bit earlier. You've been watching Encounters, the number one spiritual UFO talk show right here on social media. Everybody take care. Thank you for the gifts. And uh, we'll catch you later. Have a good, have a good weekend, everybody.